Intelligence. People say intelligence is a lot more attractive than beauty. I often ask people if they would prefer a partner who is intelligent or good looking. They almost always say they want someone who is intelligent. I wonder why it is some of us are so intelligent and others aren't. Surely we are all born with a similar level of intelligence. I'm not really sure how intelligent I am. Sometimes I think I'm intelligent, but then I do something really dumb. Or I meet someone who is super brainy, who makes me feel unintelligent. One day, I'm going to take one of those intelligence tests to measure my IQ. Another thing I don't get about intelligence is how people think our leaders are so intelligent. But then the leaders do such stupid things. Do intelligent people start wars? The Internet I think the Internet is the greatest invention ever. Think how it has changed the world. So much information is out there. It has totally changed my life. I can chat with friends, download music, buy books, and get all the info I need for my homework. It took days or weeks to do any of these things before the internet. I spend hours every day online. I think I spend a little too long. I'm sure staring at a computer screen all day isn't good for my eyes. I think it's also making me fat. I need to exercise a little more. The only thing I don't like about the internet is that it can be dangerous. I don't really like putting my personal information online, especially on social networking sites like Facebook. Investments I'm totally hopeless with money. I've never really understood things like investments. I should be more interested in investments because I know I'll get more money. I find everything very confusing. I never know what to invest in. Some of my friends invest in stocks and shares. I never did this. I'm happy because I didn't lose money in the financial crash. I think it would be interesting to invest in things like wine. I saw a TV program once. Wine goes up and up and up in price. You really can make a lot of money. I think investing in property nowadays is risky. I also know a lot of people who now owe lots of money on the house they bought because the prices crashed. Perhaps it's better to keep my money under the... Gardening Everybody should take up gardening as a hobby. We can all get back to nature. Thousands of years ago we all did a bit of gardening. It's one of the most relaxing hobbies I can think of. It's also very satisfying. I get very excited about gardening. I love planting seeds and then letting nature take over. It's amazing how quickly things grow. Before you know it, your seeds are beautiful flowers. You also learn a lot about flowers, vegetables, shrubs and trees. Of course, gardening is also very practical. If you grow vegetables, you can eat what you grow. Vegetables picked fresh from your garden really do taste better than the ones in the shops. Gardening is good for you. It makes you feel part of the earth. Gardens I really like walking around gardens. Every garden is different. Even two gardens that are next to each other are different. I loved the garden our family had when I was small. I also loved starting my own garden when I bought my house. The best gardens in the world are in England. English country gardens are famous all over the world. The gardeners are like artists. It's amazing how they make everything so perfect and so colourful. I can sit in or walk through an English garden all day. 
I also like Japanese gardens. They also have a very special feel about them. Everything is so perfect and you feel really peaceful. I'd like to spend my life visiting different gardens. Hacking Ten years ago, the word hacking didn't mean much to anyone. I think it meant cutting something very roughly. Now we all need to be aware of hacking. Hacking has turned into a major crime. Hackers are stealing people's identities, money, personal information and using them illegally. Hackers are also breaking into top secret government computers to steal classified information. Many spies are using hackers to get the information they want. Many people say the next world war will be fought by hackers in cyberspace. You really need to be careful what information you put online. It's also really important to keep your security up to date on your computer. You need the latest firewalls and antivirus software. Hair I never know what to do with my hair. Sometimes I want it long, sometimes I want to cut it all off. My hair is a little unmanageable. It never does what I want it to. It's very thick. When it's long I have lots of split ends, so I have to go to the hairdressers for a trim. I also have dandruff, which is a little embarrassing when I wear dark sweaters. I don't often have a bad hair day. This usually only happens when I have to meet someone important. My hair sticks out all over the place. I hate it. I always think everyone is looking at me or looking at my misbehaving hair. I often wonder what it would be like if we had no hair, if we were all bald. We could save lots of money on shampoos and conditioners. Globalization What does globalization mean? We always hear this word on TV and read about it in newspapers. It means the world is now a village, the global village. The world has become smaller. Of course, the world did not shrink and it isn't a village. Because of better transport, the internet and more trading between countries, it is easier to do business. Japanese car makers have factories in Thailand. American computer companies employ thousands of people in China. That's globalization. And don't forget the millions of call center jobs in India that workers in America used to do. Globalization also means it is easier to work in another country. Is globalization a good or bad thing? That's a difficult question to answer. Insects. Some people love insects and others absolutely hate them. I can't count how many of my friends are terrified of insects. I have one friend who jumps and screams at the sight of the tiniest bug. He's over 40 years old. My son loves insects. He has many books on them and knows everything about them. He loves going to insect museums and watching nature documentaries on insects. I also love them. I think insects are fascinating. I can watch them for hours. I also love looking at them in zoos and museums. It's like looking at a tiny miniature world. I think if I was insect sized, life would be pretty scary. Or even worse. What if one day there were giant insects roaming the streets? That's the stuff of horror movies. Friends I think I have the greatest friends in the world. They are just as important to me as family. In fact, they are my family, really. My best friends and I all grew up together and shared so many experiences together. We know everything about each other. I would do anything for my friends, and I'm sure they'd do anything for me. 
I'm sure there's nothing in the world that could stop us from being friends. I've also made lots of other good friends from university and the different places I've worked. They are also important to me. We are now all over the world and it's sometimes difficult to meet each other, but we stay in touch. One day, I'd like to get all of my friends together for a big party. That'd be great fun. Frustration Frustration is a terrible thing. In fact, it's a frustrating thing. Getting frustrated is one of life's biggest frustrations. I wish I didn't get frustrated, but there are so many things in life that are frustrating. I think the biggest thing recently is computers. Getting a new computer out of the box can be frustrating. Understanding how everything works is doubly frustrating. And then there are all the frustrations with programs that freeze, web pages that don't open, and things you lose. I wonder why we get so frustrated. I think we could do things better if we relaxed and did everything slowly. I wonder if animals and birds get frustrated. I'm sure a lot of the things we humans do causes them a lot of frustration. Fun Everybody wants to have fun. Life would be so boring if fun was taken away. There are so many things you can do for fun. The best thing, I think, is simply to be with your friends. You'll always have a fun time with them. I can't remember the most fun I've ever had. I had loads of fun times when I was a kid. It seemed as though life was all fun, except for homework. But university was also a lot of fun. I'd love to do all that again. I'm not sure if I'd call working fun. There's not much fun sitting at a desk and trying to please your boss. Weekends are fun, though. I always try to have as much fun as I can at the weekend. Having fun is the best way to relieve the stress that builds up during the week. Funerals. If I could, I'd never go to another funeral again. No one likes funerals, of course, but for me, they make me so sad. I can't stop crying. Quite often I'm the only person crying. Everything about a funeral makes me cry. When I open the invitation, tears well up in my eyes. When I see the funeral procession drive by, I start. The actual ceremony is almost unbearable. I have never learnt to control my sobs. If you hear someone sniffing non-stop, that's me. The music at funerals is unnecessarily sad. I've told my friends I want salsa music at my funeral, and I don't want people to wear black. I also hope the party after the funeral isn't a sad occasion. People should laugh and remember the funny times. Information We are living in an age of information. That's what I keep hearing on TV and reading in newspapers. We are surrounded by information technology that puts information at our fingertips. To get ahead, you need the latest information. I'm not really sure how much information we need. Our brains can only handle a certain amount of information at a time. I reckon a lot of us have information overload. I'm sure before computers came along this didn't happen. One problem with computers is the amount of personal information online. I worry about putting confidential info on different websites. Of course, the great thing about computers is that we have so much information at our disposal. That's pretty useful. Genetic engineering I think the idea of genetic engineering is fascinating. It's also quite dangerous. Fiddling around with what makes us human 
might make us less human. We could end up creating a Frankenstein's monster. The idea of genetic engineering has been around for centuries. Scientists have always wanted to change us. The real breakthrough came in the latter half of last century. Geneticists cracked the genetic code and found ways of altering our genes. Now they can clone animals and reproduce human tissue and organs. I don't think it'll be too long before scientists clone a person. Once all the fuss has died down, younger generations will be more accepting of genetic engineering. We might even live to be 200 years old. Genocide. I really don't understand why genocide happens. Every five or ten years we hear about the latest genocide. Every time we hear about it, governments say it will never happen again. After the genocide in Rwanda, the USA and other world powers promised to stop any future killing. Then Darfur came along and all they do is talk. If a crazy government wants to kill thousands of innocent civilians, no one can stop them. Genocide is the biggest shame in our history. Countries go to war because of oil, but not to stop innocent people being murdered. Only recently has the international community started chasing those who organise genocide. The International Criminal Court prosecutes those who commit crimes against humanity. Getting married One of the busiest times of our life must be our wedding day. Getting married can be a very stressful time, but it is also one of the happiest days in our life. It all begins with the proposal. After that comes setting the date. Once the couple know the wedding day, it's planning, planning and planning. They have to decide where to get married, who to invite, what kind of flowers, where to have the reception and a million and one other things. Getting married can be a very expensive occasion. Some parents save all their lives to pay for their son's or daughter's wedding. Getting married seems to be similar all over the world. The happy couple make some vows in front of their guests and then there is a big party after. Global Warming Global warming is the biggest problem in the world today. Everyone knows about it, but not everyone is trying to stop it. Many world leaders are more interested in blaming other countries for the crisis. Countries like China, India and Russia say they will not act unless America takes more action. America says it will not act until other countries take more action. It seems a little childish that leaders are acting in this way. The future of our world is at risk and governments can only argue with each other. Many presidents and prime ministers tell us that technology is the answer. They say future scientists will find solutions to save the planet. This is a big gamble. I hope they are right. I don't believe them, so I'll continue switching off lights and recycling. Furniture. I have a passion for furniture. I love it. I particularly love antique furniture. I love going round old houses and looking at all the beautiful sofas and chests and cabinets from hundreds of years ago. Making furniture used to be a real art. They don't make furniture like they used to. Nowadays a lot of furniture is rubbish. A lot of it you have to make yourself. Actually I quite like that. I like wandering around IKEA and seeing what they have. You can pay extra to have the guys assemble your furniture for you, but I like doing it myself. I'm studying interior design and would like to start my own furniture shop one day. 
I'll mix modern ideas with traditional ones. I'd like to start a trend for green furniture that helps the environment. Gambling. Gambling is a very dangerous thing. At least that's what I think. I don't think much good comes of it. People lose their money and then get angry. Sometimes people lose everything they have. The only people who win are the companies, casinos, etc. that organize gambling. I don't really understand why people would want to risk their money. Most of the time they lose it. The odds are always against you. Gambling causes so many social problems. I'm surprised governments allow it. In some countries, it is illegal to gamble. This is good. I never understand why people gamble again and again. They must get tired with throwing their money away. I suppose they always think the next one will be the one they make a lot of money. Gangs Gangs are becoming a big problem in many countries around the world. We've always had gangs, and they've always created problems. Recently, things seem to be getting out of control. Gangs are taking over our streets. In many parts of South America, gangs kill because of drugs. In many parts of Europe, gangs hang around on street corners and hassle anyone who walks by. There's a lot of pressure for young people to join a gang. If a young person doesn't join a gang, they might be bullied at school. The government always says gangs are a problem, but they never do anything about it. I was in a gang when I was younger. It's scary when I look back on it. We used to have lots of fights and do many bad things. Gangsters when I was a kid, I thought gangsters were really cool. I loved watching gangster movies. Al Capone was almost like a hero to me. I always wanted the gangster in the movie to escape from the police. The movies made gangsters look like heroes. Now I'm older, I think that's shocking. How can they glamorize the life of gangsters? Of course, we all know gangsters are dangerous. They are involved in many crimes. They sell drugs, traffic children, and run prostitution rings. Many gangsters control politicians and policemen. In fact, in many countries around the world, gangsters become politicians. The funny thing is, even now, when I look at gangster movies, I still think the gangster is the good guy. That's a little worrying. Haircuts. I wonder how many times we have our hair cut in our life. Hundreds. It would also be interesting to know how many different hairstyles we have. I know the styles I had when I was younger would look silly today. I really like haircuts. It's interesting sitting in the hairdresser's chair and watching the stylist do things. I often think a good haircut is like art, and the hairdresser is the artist. I have had a few disastrous haircuts, usually when they cut too much off. I need a long fringe because my face is a strange shape. The best thing I like about haircuts is having a chat to the hairdresser. He or she can usually talk about anything and everything. I also like the smell of everything when I'm sitting in the chair. Hands Hands are interesting things. They can do so many things. We'd be lost without them. I think hands are one of the most useful parts of the body. They are so clever. We can do so many different things with our hands. We can hold things, squeeze things, feel things. We can swing on jungle gyms, write and type letters. The list is endless. I think hands are a very beautiful part of the body. 
if they are well looked after. It's interesting to see how many different parts there are to our hands. We have a palm, fingers, knuckles, lifelines, fingertips and the back of our hand. There are lots of good things you can do with your hands. I like holding hands, of course with my wife and children. I love you. Love makes the world go round, not money. I agree with the centuries-old quote that says, Love conquers all. It's true when you think about it. So much has been written about love. It must be one of the most written and talked about topics ever. How many songs and poems are there about love? Millions, billions perhaps. Love is everywhere. You can't pass a single day without hearing someone say love. It is one of the most beautiful words in any language. Your heart can melt when someone says, I love you. It's also very important to tell people you love them. You should do it every day. There are many different kinds of love and they are all important. Except perhaps when you love pizza or burgers. That's not healthy. Immigration Immigration wasn't really a problem a long time ago. Many countries welcomed immigrants because they needed workers. The USA, Australia and Canada encouraged millions of people to come and live in their countries. Today, however, immigration is becoming a problem. Many countries are trying to control immigration. At election time it is a major issue. Immigration today is big business. More and more people from poor countries want to live in rich countries. It is easier to travel nowadays because of cheap transport and more open borders. People risk their lives to get the chance of starting a new life in a rich country. This can cause anger in the countries immigrants go to. It is an issue that will be with us forever, I think. Inflation Inflation seems to be a big issue at the moment. Every time I turn on the news there is a story about inflation. Many countries around the world are fighting to keep inflation under control. Sometimes you read about countries that lose the battle against inflation. Zimbabwe once had an inflation rate of trillions of percent. I can't imagine trying to add up my shopping bill with so many zeros. I have no idea how they brought it under control. Inflation in my country is okay at the moment. The government is worried about prices going up. Me too. Inflation seems to be the thing economists worry about most. They do everything they can to keep the rate of inflation low. It has been pretty stable for years now. Chanel Chanel is a Paris-based fashion house founded in 1909 by Gabrielle Coco Chanel. She operated on her design maxim that simplicity is the keynote of all true elegance. Chanel has an unrivaled reputation for quality and style. Its iconic products include haute couture, perfumes, jewellery, bags and purses, and fashion accessories. The history of the company is full of glitz, glamour, movie stars, and top fashion designers. Marilyn Monroe helped make the perfume Chanel No. 5 famous in the 1950s, and Hollywood actresses have contributed to the glamour since. Chanel operates over 200 boutiques across the globe, always in upmarket shopping districts or ritzy department stores. Such is Chanel's popularity and pull, it constantly has to fight battles to stop the illegal counterfeiting of its goods. Dell Dell Inc. 
is a multinational information technology company. It is best known for its competitively priced computers and its original distribution methods. It was started by Michael Dell in 1984 under the name of PCs Limited. Dell was a student at the University of Texas and believed he could make money by making computers for and selling directly to his customers. He made $73 million in his first year by allowing customers to order their computers and choose design options. In 1996, Dell started selling computers via the internet and his company became a serious contender in the PC market. In 2002, Dell moved into making televisions, music players and printers. Dell is committed to innovation and green technologies. It is working towards being the greenest technology company on the planet. Disney Walt Disney is the world's largest and best known media and entertainment company. It was founded in 1926 by animator brothers Walt and Roy Disney. They became pioneers in making cartoons and full-length animated movies. Their creations are now an established part of our culture. Mickey Mouse, Fantasia, Snow White, Dumbo and Bambi are all cinema classics. The company's theme parks are also world famous. Disney has moved with the times and made several key acquisitions. In 2006, Disney bought Pixar Animation Studios from Apple founder Steve Jobs. And three years later, it bought Marvel Entertainment. Disney thus added cultural icons like Toy Story and Spider-Man. The Disney website explains the company's commitment to produce unparalleled entertainment experiences based on the rich legacy of quality creative content and exceptional storytelling. Duracell Duracell is perhaps the world's best known make of batteries. The brand is owned by the multinational conglomerate Procter & Gamble. Duracell was founded by scientists Samuel Rubin and entrepreneur Duracell was founded by scientist Samuel Rubin and entrepreneur Philip Rogers Mallory. They developed an alkaline technology in the 1970s to replace the need for more dangerous mercury batteries. Duracell was introduced in 1974. It is a combination of the words durable and cell. They marketed the batteries as being the world's longest lasting. The company website says, as a brand, we realized that there were and still are many uses for batteries. And as technology advanced, the uses for batteries only increased. We quickly became the world's leading producer of high performance alkaline batteries. BMW BMW, Bavarian Motor Works in English, is a German car, motorbike and engine maker. It is well known for its high quality luxury vehicles. Its website says, the BMW Group has its sights set firmly on the premium sector of the international automobile market. The company has its roots in aircraft engines. Its blue and white logo signifies an airplane propeller cutting through a blue sky. It moved to the production of motorbikes after World War I and automobiles in 1928. The company bought the Mini brand in 2001 and owns Rolls-Royce. The BMW Group produces almost 1.5 million cars and 90,000 motorbikes a year. BMW is heavily involved in motorsport. It won the Paris-Dakar Rally six times and the F1 Drivers' Championship once. The company's current slogan is Joy is B.
BMW. Boeing Boeing is a major aerospace and defense company founded by William E. Boeing in Seattle in 1917. It is the world's largest aircraft manufacturer and third largest maker of military aircraft and weapons. Boeing is a major service provider to NASA and helps operate the Space Shuttle and International Space Station. The company has a long tradition of aerospace leadership and innovation. Its revenues are in excess of $60 billion a year, making it the USA's largest exporter. It is also a huge employer with around 160,000 employees. Boeing became a leader in manufacturing commercial jet airliners in 1958 with the introduction of the Boeing 707, a four-engine, 156-passenger airline. Successive versions of this aircraft led to today's Super Jumbo 747 and 777 jets and the new 787 Dreamliner. Budweiser Budweiser is one of the biggest selling beers in the world. It is brewed by the Anheuser-Busch breweries in the United States, but it has its origins in the Czech Republic. In 2008, Anheuser-Busch sold most of the operations to the Belgian-Brazilian beer giant InBev to create the largest brewing company in the world. Brewing of the pale lager started in 1876 and has become an American icon. Budweiser accounts for over half of all beers sold in the USA. Like other beers, Budweiser is known for its distinctive bottle and label, both of which remains largely unchanged since 1876. Tradition is important to the company. Its website says, At Budweiser, we take enormous pride in brewing the great American lager. But being a part of American history and life is what really makes us proud. Amazon Amazon.com is one of the biggest success stories of the internet. It was started by Jeff Bezos from a garage in Seattle, Washington in 1995 and is now the largest online retailer in the world. Bezos was Time Magazine's Person of the Year in 1999 for popularizing online shopping. His company originally sold only books, but has diversified into selling music, video games, toys, electronics, and other popular ranges of goods. Amazon has cleverly marketed itself worldwide by establishing separate websites in different countries. In 2007, Amazon launched its Kindle ebook reader, which now enjoys a huge share of that market. A year later, it teamed up with toy and electronics makers to sell goods with minimal packaging to help the environment. It remains an innovative leader in the area of online commerce. Apple Apple Inc. is one of the world's best known and perhaps favorite companies. It has earned the reputation as being an innovative leader in the fields of personal computers, software, music players, mobile phones, and digital music distribution. The company was started by Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak in 1976. In 2010, it became the world's most valuable computer company. Apple has succeeded by providing customers with high-quality, groundbreaking products. Almost everything Apple produces creates a media frenzy. The brand loyalty the company enjoys is the envy of any business. The company's product range is a list of stunning commercial successes, from the iMac to iTunes, the iPod, iPad and iPhone. 
Fortune magazine says Apple is the world's most admired company. Adidas Adidas is one of the world's top sporting brands. It is based in Germany and includes other brands like Reebok in its group. The three parallel bars that form its logo is known worldwide. The company bought these three stripes from a Finnish sports company in the 1950s. Adidas has provided quality sporting goods for decades. They create a very strong brand loyalty among consumers. Many people wear Adidas clothes and shoes as a fashion statement. The company also manufactures other products such as bags, glasses and watches. Adidas is heavily into sponsoring sports stars and teams. It is involved in sponsorship deals with the top soccer, rugby and cricket teams all over the world. Its current marketing slogan perhaps sums up the company's success. Impossible is nothing. American Express American Express, aka Amex, is one of the world's top 20 global brands. The financial services company was established in 1850. It is one of the 30 companies that make up the Dow Jones Industrial Average Index. The company's core business is credit cards and traveler's checks. American Express credit cards are seen as a premium product. Its membership fee is higher than most and it markets itself to a richer business traveling clientele. As a result, the company suffers less credit losses than its competitors. The company likes to keep with tradition. Its slogan, Don't Leave Home Without It, dates from 1975. Amex is frequently high on industry lists. Fortune magazine listed it as one of the world's 30 most admired companies and the New York Times reported it has a 91% customer satisfaction rate. Armani Armani is known all across the world for being a leader in style. The Italian fashion house was founded by legendary designer Giorgio Armani in 1975. It is today one of the fashion world's most prestigious names. It produces a wide range of clothes, accessories, glasses and cosmetics. All of these are carefully branded as sub-labels to target different markets. The Giorgio Armani collection is one of the most expensive in the world. For the not so rich, there is the Armani Exchange, which has more moderately priced items. The company operates several hundred stores around the world. Armani is branching out into luxury tourism by opening a chain of stylish five-star boutique hotels and resorts in the world's trendiest cities. The first opened in Dubai in 2010, in Burj Khalifa, the world's tallest building. CNN CNN, Cable News Network, is an American-owned cable news channel that is viewed in over 200 countries. It was founded in 1980 by media giant Ted Turner. He succeeded in his vision of providing 24-hour television news coverage. CNN was the first all-news TV channel in the USA. It is owned by parent company Time Warner. The CNN website says, CNN is constantly updated to bring you the top news stories from around the world. It is produced by dedicated staff in London and Hong Kong working with colleagues at CNN's World Headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia, and with bureaus worldwide. CNN relies heavily on its global team of over 4,000 news professionals. 
Estimates are that CNN reaches 100 million American households and a million U.S. hotel rooms. Coca-Cola The Coca-Cola company is a soft drinks giant that was established in 1886. Its mission is to strive to refresh the world, inspire moments of optimism and happiness, create value and make a difference. It often tops the list of being the world's most recognizable brand. Its iconic Coca-Cola drink, also known as Coke, started life as medicine. Today, it is one of the biggest selling products on the planet. The company website says its 3,300 plus beverages are sold in over 200 countries. It sells 1.6 billion drinks a day and employs close to 100,000 people. One secret to the company's phenomenal success is what it calls the Coca-Cola system. The more than 300 worldwide bottling partners that work together to distribute its products. Another is its catchy advertising slogans such as Coke is it. Its biggest rival is Pepsi. Colgate Palmolive The Colgate Palmolive Company is one of the world's biggest producers of household and personal hygiene goods. The Colgate half was founded in 1806 by soap and candle maker William Colgate. The Palmolive half was a rival company founded by B.J. Johnson who made a soap from palm and olive oils. The two companies merged in 1953. Today the company generates over 15 billion dollars a year in revenue. Its major competitor is Procter and Gamble. Colgate Palmolive have a very broad mix of brands including Ajax Cleaner, Palmolive Soap, Colgate Toothpaste and Fab Detergent. The chairman says the company is deeply committed to advancing technology which can address changing consumer needs throughout the world. His website message states, Our goal is to create products that will continue to improve the quality of life for our consumers wherever they live. Carlsberg Carlsberg is a Danish brewing company founded in Copenhagen in 1847. It was started by J.C. Jacobson and named after his son, Carl. The pH scale, the standard measurement of acidity, was developed in Carlsberg's laboratories in 1909. It is currently the world's fourth largest brewing group. Carlsberg sells 114 million bottles of beer every day across more than 150 markets. The company began exporting beer in 1868 and 100 years later opened its first overseas brewery in Malawi. It currently has dozens of different brands in many countries. Its most famous products are the Carlsberg Lager, Special Brew which has a 9% alcohol content and Elephant Beer. Carlsberg has been involved in some memorable advertising using the slogans probably the best beer in the world. Citibank Citibank is the banking division of the financial services giant Citigroup. It was founded in 1812 as the City Bank of New York. It is one of the biggest banks in the world and one of the widest reaching. Citibank has more than 1,400 branches in over 100 countries. Over half of these are in the USA. The bank offers many products in addition to banking. It offers customers insurance services, credit cards and investment products, among other things. 
Citibank boasts one of the most popular online banking operations in the world, with more than 15 million customers. The bank suffered huge losses in the 2008 financial crisis and had to be bailed out by the US government. Citibank says it is committed to running our business in a manner that benefits society and the environment. BlackBerry BlackBerry is one of the world's leading smartphone and email devices. It currently enjoys a 20% market share of mobile phone sales, but that is under pressure from Apple's iPhone and similar phones. The BlackBerry is developed by the Canadian IT company RIM, Research in Motion. It started out life in 1999 as a pager, but quickly developed into a more communicative tool that exploited internet capabilities. It soon grew to be the number one choice for business people in the USA. Barack Obama famously was rarely unattached to his device during the 2008 presidential campaign. Today, more than 40 million Blackberries a year are shipped worldwide. The addictive nature of the device means it has picked up the nickname Crackberry, a term borrowed from crack cocaine. The Asahi Shimbun The Asahi Shimbun is one of Japan's best-selling newspapers with a daily circulation of over 8 million. Its website says it is the country's most respected daily Japanese language newspaper. Asahi Shimbun in English means Morning Sun newspaper. It was founded in 1879 and cost one sen, a hundredth of a yen. The paper prides itself on its investigative reporting and analyses of business and political coverage, as well as insightful stories on Japan's fascinating subculture. There is a highly popular digital edition of the newspaper in English, the AJW, Asia and Japan Watch, which offers in-depth coverage of China, the Korean Peninsula and the rest of Asia. There is a Kindle version that offers stories on cool Japan. The newspaper has an alliance with the International Herald Tribune. Avon Avon is the world's largest cosmetics and perfume company. It's also one of the oldest. It was founded in New York in 1886 by a door-to-door -door book salesman, David H. McConnell, who gave away perfume to encourage sales. The perfume became more popular than the books, so he established the California Perfume Company. Since then, it has become a multinational corporation, employing over 40,000 people in 140 plus countries across the globe, and has annual sales in excess of $10 billion. The company uses a mix of sales strategies, relying on door-to-door -door selling, catalogues and retail stores. Traditionally, the trademark Avon Lady would come to customers' doors. The company is expanding quickly into China and Russia and has also targeted the market for male cosmetics. Burberry Burberry is a classic, traditional fashion house founded by Thomas Burberry near London in 1856. The 21-year-old textiles trainee decided to start making and selling his own outdoor clothes. He invented the world-famous water-resistant fabric Gabardine in 1888 and opened his first store in London's fashionable Haymarket in 1891. Burberry created clothing for early explorers to the South Pole and Mount Everest. Gabardine 
and the traditional Burberry Tartan Czech pattern are now company trademarks. They form part of a multi-billion dollar company. It has branched out into perfumes, watches, sunglasses and accessories. It had some image problems in the 1980s and 1990s when it became popular with British football hooligans. However, rebranding in top fashion magazines has returned its luxury appeal. Burger King Burger King is a global chain of hamburger and fast food restaurants. It was founded in 1955 by David Edgerton and James McLemore in Miami, Florida. It has since grown to 12,000 restaurants in over 70 countries and is now one of the world's biggest restaurant chains. Burger King also has a strong presence at US Army and US Air Force bases worldwide. The company's most famous product is the Whopper, a quarter pound hamburger introduced in 1957. The burger became famous enough for advertising execs to start the home of the Whopper slogan. The company says it is strong on corporate responsibility. Its website says, we are committed to diversity and inclusion, food safety and animal welfare, sensitivity towards the environment and a spectrum of civic and charitable initiatives. Canon Canon is one of the world's top makers of digital imaging and photography equipment. The company was founded in Tokyo, Japan in 1937. It started life as Quanon, but changed to Canon in 1947. It has grown to become synonymous for high quality and affordable products. It has three main areas of operations. Its office business unit manufactures copy machines and printers. Its consumer business unit produces SLR and digital cameras and lenses and video cameras and its industry and other business unit is responsible for semiconductor equipment, medical image recording equipment, computers, scanners and calculators. It has an annual revenue in excess of 35 billion dollars. Canon recently topped a survey of 56 companies by the Clean Air Cool Planet organization for climate friendliness. Barbie. The Barbie doll is one of the most successful toys in history. It was launched in 1959 by the US toy manufacturer Mattel. It has since become a cultural icon. American businesswoman Ruth Handler came up with the idea of an adult doll for small girls after seeing her daughter dressing up paper dolls. The name Barbie comes from Handler's own daughter, Barbara. Over 350,000 dolls were sold in the first year. Over a billion Barbies have been sold since. Clever marketing means toy execs keep Barbie up with the times. They adjust to every cultural challenge and change. Her waist was recently widened to avoid stereotypes that women must be thin. She also sports a tattoo on her back. Sales are also boosted by a range of pets, cars and accessories, everything the young woman might need. Benetton Benetton is a globally known fashion brand based in Italy. It was founded in 1965 by Luciano Benetton and other family members. He had the idea of selling very colourful clothes at a local market and it caught on. Continuing with this theme, the company marketed itself as the United Colours of Benetton. It now has 6,000 stores around the world 
and produces 150,000 items of clothing. Its website says it is a group with a strong Italian character whose style, quality and passion are clearly seen in its brands. Benetton is famous for its clever advertising campaigns. The company name was put on a series of shocking photographs such as two horses mating or a blooded newborn baby. The shock tactics worked to greatly increase market share and profits. Virtually everyone in the United States has a credit report. Credit reports are an important factor in the lives of most people. These reports are like a running log, or diary, of your credit transactions. A good credit report can be a great asset to an individual, just as a poor credit report can make it difficult for people to better their lives. There are three major credit report agencies in the U.S. TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. All work in the same way. The agencies take your credit history, accounts, and trends to establish your personal credit rating. It is a complicated process, but if you apply some common sense financial practices, you can raise your rating as time goes by. The most basic aspect of any credit rating is how individuals pay their bills. Too many missed payments or late payments will lower your score, so it is important to always make your payments on time. Another consideration is having too many credit card accounts. Once you have a good credit rating, you will begin getting offers from banks that want your business. The general rule is to have no more than a couple of credit cards. If you are going to have multiple accounts, it is best to have one Visa and one MasterCard, although some people prefer American Express cards. Another thing to watch for is your balances. Credit card balances are important because they show the credit bureaus how you manage your accounts. It is best to use no more than 60% of your credit card limit. So, if you have a $1,000 credit limit, try to keep your balance around $600. If you use too much of your balance, it tells the bureaus that you are stretched for money. Be smart with your accounts, and a good credit rating will follow. Identity theft can be one of the most devastating financial crimes that a person can suffer. The crime happens when someone uses information about you for his or her financial gain without your permission. Whenever a person has their identity stolen, the criminal can break into their bank accounts, use their active credit cards to purchase goods and services, and acquire new credit cards. Once a person has his or her identity stolen, it can take years to recover from the theft. However, there are some steps you can take that will help protect your identity and your assets. One of the most important things to do is to protect your social security number. This number is what the government, employers, and financial institutions use to track your financial life. The social security number should be kept in a safe place, and the number should be used carefully. Do not give it out to anyone you don't trust. Other things to consider are your billing statements, credit reports, receipts, 
and bank statements. Look for unauthorized charges on your credit cards and for new credit information on your credit reports. The sooner you detect any unusual financial activity, the easier it will be to repair the damage. Identity theft can affect more than your credit scores or bank accounts, though. Some of the less apparent effects can be losing employment opportunities, since many employers use credit information as a screening tool for new hires. With your identity information, people can compromise your income tax returns. It also can prevent victims from opening new credit accounts or making a major purchase. The identity theft issues must be cleaned up in order to move forward with any large purchases and get the best interest rates. So take care of your financial identity and you can reduce your chances of becoming an identity theft victim. In today's fast-paced world, people find themselves rushing from place to place during their busy days. It is normal to run several errands to multiple locations during any given day, and most people do this in their own private vehicle. Individuals who have infant children must use child safety seats wherever they go with their kids. It is not only a good idea, but also required by law. In California, children under two years of age must ride in a rear-facing car seat in the back seat unless that child weighs more than 40 pounds or is more than 40 inches tall. If a child exceeds this height and weight requirement, he or she must then be secured in a car seat or booster seat until the age of eight. Again, these seats must be placed in the back seat of a car. It isn't until a child is eight years old or has reached four foot nine inches in height that he or she or she can ride using only an adult seat belt. It is mandatory that passengers over the age of 16 must wear adult seat belts. It is further recommended that a child be kept in a car seat or booster seat for as long as possible. Even though it may sound like a good idea to move a child from a smaller car seat to a larger one, the California Highway Patrol advises to keep your child in a car seat for as long as the manufacturer recommends it. In other words, if a child seat manufacturer places a limit on how large a child can be to use a particular seat, then parents should keep their children in those seats until they reach that limit. It's all about child safety. Driving in California and in the rest of the United States is a privilege. All states have a system in place to test a potential driver's knowledge and skill behind the wheel before issuing a driver's license. Some traffic laws can be tricky, but if drivers are well informed about the driving laws in the state, they can avoid getting ticketed. Some of the basic laws are easy to understand. Traffic signals, stop and yield signs, school zones, and crosswalks are all easily visible and are not complicated. For example, traffic signals use three colors, red, amber, yellow, and green. Red means to stop and green to go. 
Amber is used to notify drivers that the green light they are approaching is about to change to red. Whenever a driver sees an amber light in the distance, he or she should begin slowing down in anticipation of the red stoplight. Arrows are also used to indicate direction. The same three colors are used with arrows, so there can be no confusion as to what to do when you, when you see a direction signal. Stop and yield signs are easy to follow, but school zones and crosswalks can be confusing. School zones generally mean to slow down, but this is only during school hours. The rest of the time, there are no additional speeding restrictions in a school zone. Crosswalks are important only when there are people using them or about to use them. Drivers must slow down when a person is approaching a crosswalk. The single most important thing to watch while driving is your speed. Going faster than the posted speed limit will almost always get you a ticket if you are seen by the police. So slow down and pay attention to traffic signs and signals to avoid a ticket and fine. One of the worst decisions anyone can make is to drive a car after having too many alcoholic drinks. Alcohol will affect drivers in a way they may not even realize. Alcohol is a depressant that slows down a person's reactions. It also affects different people in different ways. Some people can have a beer or two, or maybe a couple of cocktails, without being negatively affected while others will be severely impaired with the same amount. For those who have a th lower threshold for alcoholic drinks, even one or two drinks can mean trouble when driving an automobile. Not only is drinking and driving not a good idea, it's against the law. In the United States, Driving under the influence, DUI, of drugs or alcohol is a very serious offense. If a person is caught by the police on a DUI charge, it will mean trouble for that person. Being convicted of a DUI can mean the loss of a person's driver's license, a large fine, and worst of all, it may mean jail time. Drinking and driving could also be dangerous. If a person drives after having a few too many drinks, his or her driving skills will not be as good as they should be. Drivers must have control at all times. Remember, a driver is operating a vehicle that weighs about 2,000 pounds, which could reach speeds of up to 100 miles per hour. Driving a car is a great responsibility. Drunk drivers can cause accidents, injuries, and even deaths. So the next time you are going out for a good time, please consider using a ride-sharing service or a taxi. Enjoy yourself. Have a few drinks, but be smart. The life you save may be your own. Most people have a regular work or school schedule to adhere to. Many jobs and classes are conducted during the early morning to mid-afternoon hours, but of course there are exceptions. In California, there are many ways to get to work and school during these rush hours. This includes public transportation, such as commuter trains and buses. Additionally, many people use their own transportation to get to and from where they are going. 
This is where carpooling and HOV, high occupancy vehicles, lanes, come in handy. Carpooling is where a group of people join together to share a ride to work or school. Some large companies encourage their employees to carpool and actually help match people with each other. It's a simple concept. Two or more people who live close to each other and work in the same place can make arrangements to meet at specific times and in specific locations to share rides. The more people who join a carpool, the better the benefits. Having four people in your group is better than two because the more people who contribute to expenses, the less each individual pays. Expenses usually include gas and toll fares. Additionally, each person takes turns using his or her car, which saves wear on their vehicles. Another benefit that comes from carpooling is that you get to use the HOV lanes on freeways. These lanes are reserved for carpools, meaning not everyone can use them. They are generally free of traffic congestion and can make your commute to work or school a quick and easy trip. So if you are interested in saving a little money on gas or not using your car every day, look to your peers to start a carpool. All it takes is one other person to start a carpool and the benefits may prove to be a pleasant experience. The United States of America has a large and complex network in place for getting from one place to another throughout the country. These travel methods serve well not only Americans whenever they go on vacation or on bi a business trip to another city, but also those who work or attend school in the same city they live in. In California, which is the most populous state in the country and the third largest in area, getting around is easy. There are commuter trains to take people quickly and efficiently to and from work, school, or when on recreation. Additionally, nearly every city has a bus service that commuters can use to reach other neighborhoods. Southern California boasts the largest car culture in the country. Nearly everyone in the region owns a car that they use on a daily basis to get to work, school, or elsewhere. In recent years, there has been a great importance placed on expanding the existing commuter train system in California. In Southern California, Metro has, has added a number of new commuter train lines that help residents get from place to place. The same situation exists in other large cities and regions throughout the state. California has also decided to build a high-speed rail line linking Southern California with Northern California. This bullet train is currently under construction and should be in place in the near future. Once it is built, it will give travelers who would normally fly an option to take the train instead. This is good news to those who are afraid of flying or do not have time to take a bus. Other ways of getting around the country have appeared in recent years. Car sharing services such as Uber and Lyft have come onto the scene. These services are similar to using a traditional taxi and are very popular. All these services will pick you up and take you to your destination for a fee.
Most large cities in the United States have their own police departments, and part of these departments' duties is traffic control. Whenever a person is driving through any city, it is a good idea to obey all the traffic laws. Some of the basic laws, like stopping at red lights, speeding, and making U-turns, are similar in most cities, but that is not always the case. Sometimes what is legal in one city might be illegal in another. It is wise to check the traffic laws in cities where drivers work and live. Whenever drivers are stopped or pulled over by a policeman, it is important to move the vehicle to the nearest safe area near a curb. Drivers will know they are being pulled over by the flashing red and blue lights atop of the police car. This is a signal that the police want you to stop. The reasons police pull cars over are many. It could be that the driver was going too fast, or that he or she fail failed to stop at a traffic light or stop sign. It could also be because one of the car's lights is out, or the vehicle registration is expired. These are just some of the reasons police pull drivers over. There are certain things drivers need to do whenever they are faced with this situation. The first thing a driver should do is to comply with any instructions the police officer may be giving them over the speaker. If no instructions are given, pull to the nearest safe spot and wait in the driver's seat until the officer comes to the door. Always be polite and give the officer your driver's license, proof of insurance, and current registration. Remember, you should always be respectful. One of the best feelings anyone can have is when they buy their first car. Buying a car may seem like an easy thing to do, but it is a bit more than that. Buying the right car to fit a particular need is not as easy as it seems. The first thing a new car buyer should do is to figure out how much he or she can buy. Car prices range from a couple thousand dollars for a used vehicle to over ten or twenty thousand for a new one. Once a buyer determines the price of a car that he or she can afford, it is time to start shopping. One way to shop for a car is to use the internet. There are many websites that deal exclusively in finding the right car for any person. Try cars.com or autotrader.com for starters. Additionally, most major car dealerships have their own online websites where prospective buyers can sit in the comfort of their own home and search for cars. All of these, these websites let buyers narrow their search using filters such as minimum and maximum prices, make, model, year, color, and new or used. These are very powerful tools that are available to consumers with just a click of the mouse. Another way to find a car is the old-fashioned way, that is, to visit a car dealership and talk to a salesperson. Once a car is purchased, it must be registered with the Department of Motor Vehicles, DMV. For most new car sales through dealerships, the registration is taken care of for the consumer. 
The registration paperwork and fees are sent directly to the DMV. When a used car is purchased through a private owner, the registration has to be done by the buyer. It is a simple process. Just go to the DMV with the paperwork, pay the fee, and they'll do the rest. Driving a car in the United States is a privilege. It's one of the greatest experiences you can have in the States. A person who drives a car has the freedom to go wherever he or she wants, for the most part. However, driving a car comes with responsibilities. One of the primary responsibilities is that a driver must have auto insurance. Car insurance, like most other insurances, is designed to protect the buyer, in this case, the car owner, from suffering great expenses in an emergency situation. No matter how good a driver you may be, there are many other drivers on the road and many of them may not be as good a driver as you are. It is important to recognize this since you are sharing the road with them. There are two basic types of car insurance, liability and collision. The state of California requires that all drivers carry liability insurance. Collision insurance is optional unless the driver has borrowed money to buy the car from a financial institution. In that case, the bank or credit union will require the driver to purchase collision insurance. Liability insurance is a part of the general insurance system of risk financing to protect the insured person from the risks of liabilities from lawsuits and similar claims. It protects a policyholder in the event he or she is sued for claims that come within the coverage of the insurance policy. For the most part, liability insurance will cover a person from financial damages caused by the insured. So if you cause an accident, liability insurance will protect you. It will cover property damage and bodily harm damage up to the amount of insurance purchased. So think carefully about any financial caps you set on your insurance. The best thing to do, as always, is to shop around. Unlike many countries in the world, the United States traffic flows on the right-hand side of the road. This may cause some confusion for persons who come from a country that drives on the left. The tradition of driving on the right goes back to before the advent of the automobile. The first law enacted to require people to drive on the right was passed in the city of Philadelphia in 1792. Cities throughout the country soon followed and the tradition became common. In addition to driving on the right, most Americans use various lights installed into vehicles to signal other drivers of their intentions. The most used lights on a car are the headlights, high beams, turn signals, emergency flashers, and backup lights. Headlights and high beams are used in night driving. It is illegal to drive with high beams constantly on because they can blind drivers driving in the opposite direction. But headlights are required at all times after dark. Turn signals let other drivers know you are about to make a turn to either the right or the left. These signals should be used every time a vehicle is about to make a turn. Emergency flashers are continuously blinking yellow lights 
that drivers use when their vehicle is disabled or they are experiencing an emergency. Backup lights are white lights that come on whenever the car's transmission is put into the reverse mode. These lights help the driver see what's behind them when backing up. All of these signal lights are important for the safe operation of a motor vehicle. By using these tools properly, a driver can make driving for all people a safe and enjoyable experience.